All right, so this is a quick demonstration about how to get started with the VMware um, cloud provisioning features of Puppet Enterprise 2. Um, so similar to the Amazon EC2 feature, we need to configure Cloud Provisioner with our credentials to talk to a VMware infrastructure. Um, so again, I've just um, got a normal installation of Puppet Enterprise 2.0. And similarly, we'll need to add um, information about an account to talk to the VMware system. Um, so just like Amazon, we've got a new Puppet subcommand called Node AWS or uh, Node VMware. And we can do things like um, list the VMware virtual machines from the command line, create a new virtual machine from a template, um, start a virtual machine or stop a virtual machine. Um, similarly, we can terminate, which would do the same thing as stopping and then actually deleting the virtual machine from disk. Um, so that's similar to the terminate action in EC2 as well. Um, so <clears throat> I haven't added my credentials to um, the, uh, Cloud Provisioner yet. So if we try one of these subcommands, we're gonna get um, this problem. So we need to supply a vSphere username, a vSphere password, and the vSphere server that we're talking to. Um, and again, these go into a file called tilde.fog. And I have one with my EC2 credentials already populated. So we're just going to add these three um, configuration settings for um, VMware. So let's go ahead and add these in now. Okay, the username, um, I've asked our administrator to create a special account strictly for my purposes. Um, so this is called Puppet Demo. And the password is the same thing. So this account actually has restricted access to our virtual center. It can only see data centers um, that aren't our production data centers, as we'll see here. Um, the vSphere server setting, this is actually asking for the host name of the virtual center instance that's running in your VMware deployment. Um, so for us, that's vc01.puppetlabs.lan. OK, so with these three settings, we can get started. Um, unfortunately, we do need to add one more additional setting. Um, Cloud Provisioner validates the authenticity of the vCenter, vCenter server, um, similar to the way SSH does. Um, the first time we connect, it will tell us the public key hash that the SSL certificate that vCenter is using. Um, so we just need to copy this hash and add it to the vSphere expected pub key hash setting. So now, now that I've added the, um, the public key, the hash of the public key, um, to our settings file, we're going to be able to connect fully. So these four settings are required before we can get started with Cloud Provisioner VMware. So now we can list all of the virtual machines in our virtual center instance. Um, so this can take a little while, especially if you have hundreds of virtual machines to list. Um, but this is actually going out, talking to the v, the vCenter um, deployment and updating all of the virtual machines um, that are out there across all the data centers. Okay. So if you don't want to wait that long to list every virtual machine across all of the data centers, um, you can see here 
we've got a couple of different data centers that, that we're listing across. I have a data center named Solutions and a data center named Solutions 2. Um, we can give the list action a very specific folder to go to. So if I want to see only the virtual machines and the templates that are in this folder, um, all we have to do is add the dash dash folder option to the list. And this will actually be much faster because we're not listing all of the virtual machines in the entire infrastructure. So you can see that took significantly um, shorter time. Um, so I've got two, two virtual machines. One of them is a template. Um, we can use a template to clone a new virtual machine. And you've, you can see here that I've got one that's left over from my previous work. Um, so let's go ahead and, and move on to the next step, which will be creating a virtual machine from one of these templates.